January 29, 1989, the 911 system in Houston received a very different kind of call, a taunting challenge from an anonymous caller. <laughs> Houston 911, what is your emergency? Yeah, this is a dispatch. We got a house fire. 1615 North Main. At Central Fire Dispatch, the first call from the arsonist came into John Musakia. So you're not going to give me that na your name, are you? Yes, yeah, torch so far. Do what? It's going to be torch from now on. Are you going to be torches? Torch. Torch? Yeah, are going to hear from me again. Okay? Wait a minute. Right. Right. I ain't going to hang up yet. In the beginning, my mind was saying, keep him on the phone as long as you can and notify arson investigators that someone called in about setting the fire. First, I thought he was either a, a nut or a... Or a prankster or whatever, but then he called back. Houston Fire and Ambulance, what is your emergency? Um, I want to talk to the guy I was talking to earlier about torch. Are you the torch? Mm-hmm. What did you want to tell me? It's going to happen again. And it's going to happen again? Uh-huh. Okay. It's going to be a whole house going to go down. I don't believe he knew that the address and the phone number where he was calling from was coming on the screen. A uh, motion to the guy that was next to me to call the police. When you what? I'm hanging up right now. Hurry up. Oh, hold on. I don't want to help you out. Catch me. Hey. This came in from HSD. This man was on the phone saying that he's been setting fires in the area. 6500 North Main, North Main East 24th there by the payphone. Supposed to be a Latin male. I'll drive down there and see if I can uh, locate him. Fire and Amos, what is your emergency? Now, it is that torch I uh, called earlier. Uh-huh. What did you torch earlier? I uh, torched a house earlier. Why did you do that? What the f*** is like, you know? Oh, you just like doing it? By the time the third call came in, all the dispatchers had been warned about the arsonist. His location was immediately passed to Chief Larry Smith, who alerted the police. This guy that called to set the house on fire. He's calling from 5824 North Main, and we got him on the phone right now. He's calling in on 911. 5824 North Main? Yeah. Dispatcher Kenneth Bankhead tried to keep the arsonist on the line long enough for the police to get to him. So what are you going to torch next? He said he was going to set another fire uh, the next night. He sounded like he really enjoyed setting fires and seeing whatever he set on fire burn. It's like he was getting kicks out of it. What you going to torch next? I told him. I'll tell him later on. Well, what you going to what you gonna set on next, man? So, hey, I want to shake around and roll. What you doing? On the other side of town. On the other side of town? Yeah. Did you by When I was notified by our dispatcher that the uh, man claiming to have started the fire was at a telephone booth, uh, we pulled into that gas station, and sure enough, he was on the phone. Adam 31, he's going to be a Latin American male. He's got a blue jacket or blue windbreaker type jacket, uh, kind of white uh, t-shirt, blue jeans. That's the assessment going to be a Latin male, blue uh, jacket, white t-shirt, blue jeans. 
What you gonna set on fire tomorrow? Hey, I wanna be looking out for it. Hello? He just hung up. Hold it! Suspect is on the ground. He's running uh, northbound through the yard from his location. To a turn, he's going eastbound. Uh, eastbound 20 is behind the houses. He's crossing the street on 21st. 2 Adam 31, I just saw him. He's in the backyard still. He's over by the car lot or the auto parts place there. If we've got a unit on West Cavalcade, we've got him blocked in. He's in the lot. Fuck! Uh, cavalcade, stay on Cavalcade side. He hasn't gone through the block yet. Get through! Get behind here! Settle down. Well, we got him in custody. Fastler, suspect in custody, zero, 0400 hours, 23 minutes. Good job, gentlemen. I was just happy that I was able to keep him on the line long enough in order to have the proper authorities to make it to that location in order to apprehend him so he wouldn't go out and hurt someone. The man arrested that night confessed to starting the fire. He pleaded guilty to arson and was sentenced to two years.